GIT 500, displaying data. So you might be wondering what the big deal is. Well, you can have the best data in the world um, that shows amazing or important things, but if it's displayed poorly, it can greatly diminish the value of that data, how it's communicated, and how people understand it. There are three basic ways to display data. You can dis display it through text. You can communicate it through text in a written description. You can show it in a table that uh, shows it anything, text and, and data, in a simple to read format. Or it could be put into a graph, also called a chart, which is used to display data in a visual manner, um, and it usually also includes some text. When using text to express and share data, you need to make sure you explain that data in a very clear manner. You need to strike a balance between academic rigor um, and getting and keeping the attention of a reader um, by writing very logically, but also in an attractive layout. Um, you can read this and you'll see that, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it basically says that, you know, what happened with the data, what the question was, what was answered, and what the figure that, or the chart that it is referring to um, says. Another way to display data is to use a table. Tables are a great way to show a lot of data in a very small space in a way that is very straightforward and usually um, quantitative. It's a much easier way to understand lots of quantitative data. This example is using APA style um, edition seven, which is the latest one. And you can see it's all about dogs scoring above, av av above average on intelligence and breed and gender. And you're getting counts and you're also getting percentages and you see the breeds. So there's a lot of data in there. It's very it easy to understand looking at this table, what's going on with that data. Tables have a very specific format, so I'm gonna quickly go through that. First thing a table needs is a table number and then the table title, which describes the type of data. So in this example, table one is the uh, table and number, and then below it, with an extra space between, you see favorite female superheroes based on age participant italicized. That is the way to format that. The next thing is what we call a stub. The stub are the categories that go along the side, so um, vertically on the left. Those are, that's called the stub. Then you have the column headings, which are other sub subcategories of the variable that are along the top. You have the actual body, uh, the actual data that's in the body. And then you have, if needed, supplemental notes, like sources, if you got it from a source, just general information, uh, specific part or levels of probability, just anything that you think needed needs to be added to make the data more comprehensible. Next we have graphs, uh, also known as charts in some areas. And the type of graph that you use will depend on what kind of data that you need to display. So if you have categorical variable, if you remember we talked about variables a few weeks ago, um, that is when you have a variable that has possible values from a set of fixed variables, um, like pick a favorite pet from dogs, cats, hamsters, or birds, those you would use bar charts, histograms, and pie charts. If you have continuous variable that can have lots of variables like age or weight or income, you can also use a line or a trend chart. 
In bar charts, histograms, and line charts, you will have an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis is the line that runs along the bottom of a chart, and the y-axis is the line that runs along the side or the vertical axis, uh, the vertical line of your chart. This particular bar chart shows the results of a question that would be how many students in percentages scored a specific letter grade on a specific test. So you can see um, one subcategory of the question, the letter grade on the test, is on the x-axis along the bottom. And the other subcategory, which would be, you know, frequency or how many in percentages, how many of those students scored each letter grade. And that is on the y-axis. Bar charts and histograms look a lot the same. There are slight differences in them. Bar charts display categorical variables, while histograms show quantitative or numerical data. For a bar chart, you're going to see categorical variables or values. The one we see on the screen here does have categorical variables. They are, um, you pick one, there's not variation. There's six things you can pick and you have to pick one. So that's a categorical uh, value. The other thing you see is that each of those categorical values, the movies, titles themselves, is separated by a space. So they're spaced out. You can clearly see each one. A histogram is different because it is going to display numerical data rather than categorical data. Although the, the numbers can be in categories like you see below, um, they can be organized to show them that way, but they are still an infinite number of answers that you could have um, in your questions as a result from your question. So that is considered a numerical um, value and you would use a histogram. The big thing on that is that the bars are together. You don't have that those large spaces in between um, each bar in each um, basically category. Um, grouping is another way to say it, grouping of numbers. A line diagram is set up like a bar chart or histogram with an x-axis and a y-axis. But what is different about it is it shows continuous data or how things are ratioed. Um, and this is shown by points on the um, graph that are then connected by lines. And you can see that here. Um, the line shows a trend over time for one variable. This chart actually has two variables. Um, as you can see, there's a legend on the right that says any Star Wars movie and any Spider-Man movie. So it's showing two different variables um, and how uh, it actually has three variables because it's the number of participants, the years that movies are viewed, and then which uh, the third variable is what type of movie. So any Star Wars movie or any Spider-Man movie. So you can see how they compare to each other. You don't have to have those two variables, that third variable. Two variables is actually fine, but this one shows how you can do that. This line chart also includes a trend curve or trend line and that is a little dotted line that you see that shows how over time in general this uh, the value of this um, question has declined over time. The last chart we're going to look at is the pie chart and the pie charts are used a little bit too much. They are really good when you have 
a few categories with a good amount of um, values for each of one of them. If there are a lot of categories and some of them only have small values, so a small amount of numbers in them, it becomes very difficult to, to see what's going on. Here I have one category that I put on purpose a very small number in. You can see it says 3%. Um, you can still see it, so that's good because I don't have that many categories in this um, chart. Uh, other things to notice, other than I've labeled it properly, which I will talk about um, uh, in the next uh, slide about labeling charts, um, I have also made sure that A, I included percentages instead of numbers of responses. You can include numbers of responses if you want, but if unless you know unless the reader knows exactly how many people are in the group, it, it's less inform, informative um, to see numbers. Percentages, on the other hand, are very quick and easy to understand, right? So um, our, our couple of the categories are very close to each other, like the maroon one at 26 with the Phantom Menace looks very close in size to uh, A New Hope, I think, which is on the opposite side. There is a little bit of a difference, though, and if you see percentages, it's very easy to understand. So get in the habit, even on the bar charts, you should add percentages onto the bar charts. All graphs have to be labeled correctly, much as tables. Unfortunately, now tables and, and graphs are labeled very similarly. Graphs, regardless of the type of graph, is going to be called a figure in a paper when you write it up. Um, it should have a title with uh, a figure and a number, the word figure and a number, then a title, a couple of lines down in the same size font, but in uh, italicized and not bolded. So here you can see in number one, we have figure one, and then a couple lines below, italicized ages of viewers of at least one Star Wars movie. Then both the X and Y axes need to be labeled properly. So here we have frequency of um, numbers of how often these ages, which is on our X axis, happen. One more good thing to include on all your charts, and you've seen it on some of the past ones, but not all, is a value on the bar or in the pie chart or anything like that um, showing the actual value so that people don't have to guess you know yeah, the attack of the clones is that 55 is that 54 is that 56 we can tell for sure it was 55 people said that I actually prefer to use percentages on that, um, just like I said in the pie chart one a couple of slides ago. Um, it is okay to do this, but I personally prefer percentages. I think it's much easier to understand for our readers. In addition to bar charts and histograms and pie charts, you also may need to include other types of visual information. Um, that could include photographs, screen captures, maps, drawings or illustrations, flow charts, anything like that can be also included in a write-up of a report or anything that you need to write in the APA style. Just like a graph, a bar chart, or a histogram, or something like that, you're going to include the word figure, and then the figure number. Uh, remember, as you add those to your paper, those figure numbers need to be consecutive, so they need to go in order. The first one is one, the second one is two, and so on. Um, 
uh, and then you have the title of whatever it is. And in this particular image, it's Wonder Woman. So we have photograph of Wonder Woman. Um, and just remember that the text that you use to do these labels should be the same font and size as the text in the body of your paper. Um, you can include a note below it. This is requ not required, but optional. This is the same with tables and uh, bar charts, other figures. Um, so this one has a note. This is note from Wonder Woman 1984. And when you do that, um, it's in regular text except for the word note. It should be italicized. The other thing you need to remember about figures and tables is that you need to refer to the every figure or table in the text. Um, you can't just put it in there and then not mention it in your in the text. So ways to do that are to say things like this is shown in figure one or as shown in figure one or you can put in parentheses if you're talking about something and it refers to um, you're talking about the data in a, in a figure you can put in parentheses in that same sentence see figure two or you can say something like figure three shows a blah 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 um, it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you do it um, when you're putting tables and figures into your paper, um, the text in your paper should stop before your table or figure and then start again after, as shown in the yes visual here. Um, not wrapped around a figure like you see in the no visual here. Um, the, example, the yes example shows an extra space at the top, and it's actually not formatted correctly, so ignore that. But... Um, it's also a good idea to put a little extra space between the top, the text and the top of the figure table and the text in the uh, bottom of the table. Um, that's not a hard and fast rule. I do it because it makes it much easier to read for the user. Again, making sure that you use the correct method for displaying your data will help make sure that the people that are reading our reports will be able to quickly and easily understand it. Again, you might have discovered something amazing or have something wonderful to show or information to impart, but if you can't correctly discuss it in your paper and visually show it well, um, you know, you it's lost its impact. In this presentation, we talked about the importance of data display, the ways to display data, which are text, tables, and graphs or charts, whichever you want to call them, uh, which are placed in figures in your reports, the different types of graphs and charts that there are, the proper labeling of tables and figures, which is very important, and then other types of non-graph figures, such as photographs and artworks, as well as how to refer to those figures and tables in the, in the text and place figures and tables in reports.